This is part one of a series entitled, I Chose You. Uh, we recorded it last Sunday in church, but had a malfunction with the video. So sharing it again from my study, John chapter 15, verse 16 through 19. Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father, in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. If the world hates you, Know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you because it loves its own. But you are not of the world. I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. So the question, who chose who? If you work at being a Christian under the conviction that you've made the choice to serve God, Satan will grind the life out of you as you toil. Because if you have a relationship with the Lord because you chose him, then that relationship is based in your strength and the devil will go to work on your imperfections and pick you apart. But if you have a relationship with the Lord because he chose you, then it's based in the strength of his decision and his will. He has already defeated Satan concerning you. Luke 10, 18 through 19, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Your ability to bear fruit comes from knowing your connection to Jesus was not your choice, but his choice. So then, when you weaken under pressure, when you get pulled by distractions, when you're tempted to renegotiate the terms of your commitment, or reordering your priorities so that church is not such an imposition on your schedule. In that moment, when you're under those weaknesses, when uh, you're pressed to dial back on Jesus, the force of a greater decision will hold you up. That decision is stronger than your own, reminding you with refreshing assurance that Jesus chose you and that despite your weakness, he remains resolved to hold you up. Your connection to God, your relationship with Jesus, your calling to serve him wasn't your initiative, it was his. So Jesus is the one who is keeping us. Philippians 2.13, one of my favorites says, the one bringing forth fruit in you, the desire and the effort for the sake of his good pleasure is God. Let's talk for a minute about the nature of your bond, your relationship with Jesus. Remember, he said, I chose you out of the world. That phrase, I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you, is important. Since Jesus is holy, when he chose you to be with him, it made you holy. Um, it's kind of like picking an avocado. I was, in, uh, I was in Walmart the other day walking by the avocado bin, and um, you know, they were all hard. And so obviously I wanted to go home and put an avocado in my salad. So I had to find that soft avocado. And uh, you know how they are. They're, they're uh, stacked up kind of like cannonballs, you know, uh, like a pyramid. And so you got to be very careful. Um, I had to reach in and I thought I saw the one that I poked my finger and felt soft. And uh, went in. But it was about four deep and I thought I could just see myself like Jenga, you know, pulling out that one block and they're all going to come rolling down. I could just see the avocados escaping onto the floor and rolling all over the place. Thankfully, that didn't happen. I did get about four or five that were soft. They were the ones I wanted. So it is like choosing an avocado. Think about it. Jesus chose you. When he chose you, he chose you out from among the avocados. He said, I chose you out of the world. The very act of choosing you took you out from among the avocados. The very act of Jesus cho choosing us, it, it had this inf impact that he referred to as being chosen out of the world. He chose us to see if we would leave the world. He, by his choice, plucked us out of the world. It's very significant. And <clears throat> in 1 Peter, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 1, verse 15 through 16, but as the one who called you is holy, you yourselves also be holy in all manner of conduct and living. For it is written, you shall be holy even as I am holy. And I like to say for a moment, when we, when we hear that term, be holy, I've chosen you to be holy. I am holy. Therefore, you be holy. We get this image in our mind of all of these external appearances that we have to conform to. 
in order to show God that we are separate from the world and that he will choose us. <clears throat> Most of those changes that we feel pressured to make are not really for the sake of God, but they're for the sake of rating us among one another and being recognized by church authorities. And there's certainly nothing wrong uh, with modifying our life, but it should be as a result of the fact that we're no longer in the world, so we don't want it. Um, I, I am not living the worldly life that I used to live before, not because I want God to choose me, but because he did choose me. Um, and that is powerful. Being holy isn't the condition by which Jesus chose you. It's the result of him choosing you. Jesus chose you with the exact same desire and intentionality with which he chose Peter. He loves you as he loved Peter, wants you as he wanted Peter. When Jesus chose the disciples, it says in Mark 3, 14, he chose them to be with him. And at the end of his ministry, as he prayed in the garden, the Bible says, in John 17, 12, those you gave me, I have kept them. The word holy refers to the realm of God, and your relationship with him sits in that realm. Holiness means that God is other than the world. <clears throat> He's not subject to the world. We saw that kind of holiness in Jesus in that he was not indifferent to the world, but he certainly was free from the world. So holiness is not being indifferent, cold, and callous towards the world. Jesus loved the world. That's why he was sent. That's why he came into the world. It was love that brought him to the world. And look, <clears throat> I know sometimes people have this warped idea of holiness that the only thing that Jesus loves is he loves your soul. Everything else he hates. Doesn't love your body. Doesn't love your physical desires. Hates the world around us. That is not true. He created this world as a context for our existence. Study your Bible. You'll find that eternity isn't spent in heaven. Eternity is spent with Jesus Christ ruling and reigning on the earth. The earth becomes the capital of the universe. In fact, the city of God, the new Jerusalem, comes down out of heaven and is planted on the earth and forever the Lord reigns from the earth. So it's the condition of the world broken under sin and the influence of Satan that God hates, but he doesn't hate the world. And he doesn't hate the fact that you are in the world. So remember that holiness is pulling you out of the, the slavery to the world, but it's not separating you from the world in every sense of the word. So <clears throat> by choosing you, Jesus has joined you to himself. And Jesus has joined you to himself, and that makes your relationship with him holy. So that when God calls you holy, and he is in effect then saying, embrace your relationship with me, for it's heavenly. It's, it's higher than the world. It's stronger than life, and that's where I have placed you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm because we are united with him. So when Jesus chose us, it united us with him. It made our relationship holy. Now, also when Jesus said, I chose you out of the world, he was saying, my choice elevated you out of the world's dominion, made you a citizen of the kingdom. But he also said, therefore, the world will hate you. Apparently, misery not only loves company, but it hates those who don't love its company. By choosing you out of the world, you must recognize that it provoked the spirit of the world against you. Because of sin, the world has a chip on its shoulder, has an attitude. And the more you live as one chosen by Jesus, the more the world's going to persecute you for rejecting it. That is what you need to know that Jesus chose you. And the more that you choose him, the more the world is going to resist you. He's holding you the more the world stresses your hold upon him. If you conceal from the world the fact that Jesus has chose you in order to be accepted by the world, Satan's going to smell a traitor. And he's going to convince you that your relationship with Jesus was more your idea than his. And so then because of that, your relationship with the Lord is in your hands to settle it. But the fact is, God 
God has chosen you and he's holding on to you. Don't fall for the lie. Jesus loves you. He chose you more than you have chosen him. Romans 8, 38 through 39, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels or principalities or powers or, or things present, things in the past, things to come, no height, no depth of a trial or any other living creature can separate me from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Guess what? I'm persuaded of that. But my persuasion doesn't rest in my ability to live this life without stumbling. I'm persuaded <clears throat> that Jesus is holding on to me and that when I do stumble, he is the one that is picking me up. So let that word sink into your heart. Let it be a comfort to you that Jesus chose you and it is the strength of his choice working in you every day to live this life for him.